Welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. No, let me scratch that. We have two very special guests. That's right. These basketball heads are father and son from a family of bowlers. It all started with their oldest brother, Chad, who passed it to Sherrod and made sure he was able to push it further than he did. Sherrod, a.k.a. Son, from his Grady days, won a state championship with Grady High School, and his son, Sincere, definitely has next. When Sherrod passed it to LaVar, he took it to the next level, being inducted to the Basketball Hall of Fame at both McClancy High School and Boston University. Now LaVar is passing those same lessons to his son, Isaiah, who is a star guard at Brooklyn Lawn Tech High School, one of the more promising programs in New York City. Like I said in my previous post, the folk legacy continues. Help me welcome to the show, LaVar and Isaiah Folk. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. yes. You have you just stepped out into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on, come on. Go hard, 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 never back down, you gotta hold your own. Go hard, 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 East Coast, go hard, West Coast, go hard, Midwest, go hard, dirty, dirty. Everybody get online by your tickets because the game about to start. Nice, nice, nice. Yo, this is awesome. This is awesome. Yes, yes. Welcome to the show, guys. What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great, man. I'm glad to have you guys here. Um, you know, and I just want to hear the story. You know, like I was saying before, uh I was around the neighborhood when, when Sherrod was coming up, mm-hmm. right? And then I, I didn't get it. I heard about you, but I never got a chance to see you play. So as I'm doing my research on my different shows, and I stumbled across this Boston University article, I'm going, damn, what I hear this name before? It ain't look familiar. I was like, oh, that's Sherrod, younger brother. So I'm reading about all the great things you did at Boston University. Then I went back to check out all the things that you did at McClancy. You actually the third McClancy guy I had on here. I had, uh, Jamal Robinson, Russ, and now you. So I've been following. I uh, appreciate you, brother. Yes, definitely. So, what's up, man, young man? How you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm, I'm great, man. I'm great. Uh, I hope I didn't put too much pressure on you in that post I made today. Nah, that's all good. All right, good, 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 good. Like a young man is willing to meet the challenge. So, Dad, this is for you. Okay. Who introduced you to the game? So, uh, four boys, there's four brothers. So after yes. that, Chad is the oldest. Yes. Chad, and we got Sherrod, then it's me, then I got a younger brother, Mo. Ah, okay, okay, cool. So, um, my whole family, not just my brothers, my whole family plays sports. So it was it was just part of what we did. But re- regarding basketball, Chad and Sherrod put the ball, they put the ball in the crib, you know? And early. Early. That's and, dope. So young man, at what age did you fall in love with the game? Well, I first started playing when I was around six, but like I fell in love with the game like my eighth grade summer going into ninth grade. Yeah, that's that's when. Mm, that that's when them high school coaches start coming out and going, "Son, yo, you nice, man." Okay, yeah. all right. So, what what uh, Dad, was you born and raised in Bed Stuy? Street, Ralph and Patrick. Right up the block, fam. Right up the block. I love my block, and so but we was always in Brevoort. Brevoort yeah. Brevoort. 
So, yes. So then I saw you played in the Midget League? Of course. So my my you know, I, my in the Midget League, my moms and my pops took me and Sherrod to watch Chad play. I didn't know where we was going, but that was my first time seeing a Kahlo. So I had to be like nice. seven or eight. And Chad was playing with the Dirty Dozen. I never forget. And I, wow. was, I was like, wow. Like, whoa. It blew me away. I'm like, what's this? All these people out here for a basketball game? And my brother playing? Nah, I want to do that. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. that motivation right there. That That's motivation. Cool. Do you do you remember the first team that you was on that? Of course. God bless. Um, rest in peace, Coach Majors. Yes. Um, yes. I played in pre team. So classic. Um, yes. So Majors one of the only coaches to meet my dad because my dad passed away when I, I was ten. So Sherrod was at three twenty four, and Majors told my dad told Majors if Lavar don't play, you can't have Sherrod. They had passed me here. And at that time, I didn't even, I was just happy to get off the block. I didn't even know what I was doing, where I was going. I just know I had to go where my big brother went. So I got right. to play pre team with Sherrod. And um, he carried us. We almost won a chip our first year in there. But we lost in the semifinals to LA Rock. But the next year, oh, I played, yeah. the team was stacked. I had, uh, I, I, had a, I had a front row seat, mind you. Because I might have been. Keep it real, Dad. Keep it real. No, we all we all came from the bench. So, but I had uh, Malik Copeland, um, Trey Thomas. Um, who's on that preteen team? Antoine, that went to Western House. The team was just loaded. Noodles. That team was just loaded. Um, Charles Miles, Charles Jones. The team was just stacked. wow, wow. Then the following years, um. I got to come to my own like 10, 11, 12. Now, Maze got me, uh, Mel Tinsley, and Trevor Diggs playing together. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Say that again, bro. Hey, listen, I hope y'all hear this backcourt right now. Yeah, so you got Trevor Diggs. No, Dad, I'm, I'm serious. I need you to repeat the name. Include yourself. So that backcourt for the crew, you had Trevor Diggs, Mel Tinsley, and Ooh. myself. So, Ooh. Because I'm playing, I didn't know. I like Sherrod tell you to this day that's one of the best games he ever saw. We playing visitation in the championship. I, I don't like yesterday. They had Stephen Rafer. So we 11 years old, and this is what. So you got three pros, and I guess me and Trev, we ain't too shabby, but we, you know, we did our thing too. But we just going at it. So the things I saw Mel Tilly do it like in the pros, he was doing back then. And wow. Trevor really had a jump shot at 10, 11 years old. So we just had a real, real good mix from back then. So I played preteen as over. I played five joints in preteen. So I had an early intro to the game. I got to sit for two years and I got to play for three. Wow. And I remember having Rafe on here and he was so proud to play the preteen, man. You know, and I, I was shocked because a lot of guys from the other boroughs don't come to Brooklyn to play. And he was there, he was definitely say down to preteen. Say that again? Uh, Rafa. He no, was on here. No, you said a lot, and a lot he, of guys don't do what? Well, a lot of guys, well, I see, well, when I was coming up, a lot of guys from our borough didn't come to Brooklyn to play. Nah, I just wanted you to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real Brooklyn dude right there. All right. That's so facts. So facts. So, Isaiah, what was the first team you were on? First team I ever played on was called Brooklyn USA. Um, yeah, I, I started there. I, started I need to know the coach. coach. Who's the coach? Well, it was a coach named Ziggy. And then I had, like, a coach named Coach Aaron. And I was, like, that was when I started playing when I was younger. Definitely, definitely. Ziggy, definitely a Brooklyn legend. Helped out a lot of, helped out a lot of kids, for sure. So, Isaiah, what year are you in now? I'm in class of 2021. I graduated this year. Well, coming up next year. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, you got to stack class, man. Yeah, I know. It's it's a lot of good guards in New York City. How do you, how do you feel uh, coming into this year? What did you do, matter of fact, what did you do this summer to get you prepared for this coming year? 
this summer I worked out almost every day. This summer I was in Connecticut with my with my uncle Sherrod and my little cousin Cecilia. Worked out yes. every day, just working on getting like working on a week towards my game, getting everything better for next year when we have the season. Nice, nice, nice. So, Dad, who was the best player in the neighborhood when you was coming up? Sherrod Folk. Temple. Temple, that's, that's, my, that's, that's my line. So, coming up, Sherrod and Chad didn't let me win nothing, anything. Anything. Nice. I'm talking about hanger ball, crate ball, because you know we were going to hold it, should we to play on the crates on PS5. Right. Tournaments. Coleco Vision, I couldn't win nothing. Hands down. And then after that, they beat me and teased me about it. So when I got to school, when I played with my peers, my eyes was grabbed because I'm like, y'all gotta get mine off. So that was my line. So I felt like if I could compete with him, I'd be good. But more so guys my age, like if you just take best style alone, it was so stacked. Like if you walk from Broadway to Fulton, you got about five or six D1 players in my group. You got Todd Miles, you got Shamel Jones, you got myself, you got Trevor, you got Jamil Watkins. That's just going down Ralph Avenue. Facts. Facts. That's just in our circle. I didn't go up to Notion, and you got the Quays and the Mel Tinsleys, and you got Charles and the Mike Campbell. It was just loaded. So, like, every... Every day was a, a war, whether you was in a park, whether you was in a tournament. So you was battle tested, and you just couldn't walk on the big court. You had to earn your, you had to earn your strikes. So, you know. You, you, you listen, you do pay your dues, man, and, and some of the people that you came up watching and then some of the people you came up playing with, you know, that definitely validates you, man, and, and definitely give you the stamp, man, for sure. Respect everybody because, like I said, you know, you know how many nice dudes in the hood that didn't play in high school or didn't play in college that but it was just legit that you had to just like if we go on the free boys, one of the toughest players you had to play against in my age, Taiwan Williams. He was just a bull. Taiwan, mm. like, but you know about him with the John. That's team, crazy. Right? But two, my guy Taiwan. I'm definitely gonna let him know this when I see him. Yeah, he was just you ain't coming ready to play. He was gonna bully you. So. And there's just so many dudes who might not have played or, you know what I'm saying, like high school, college, they were just nice. You know what I'm saying? But going through it all, I got a cousin. His nickname, Dust. You know, Dust didn't really play a lot of high school ball, but that's my guy, my role. We went through everything together. So any tournaments or anything we played in, we did it together from Creasy mm. Hall. Nice, nice. Well, uh, your coach, Isaiah, your coach just said that you're already NCAA qualified, and you're an honor student. So salute to you, my brother. That's the way to go right there. Because now you get to pick where you want to go. Yeah. I like a lot of players who kind of stuck in situations and forced to go other places. So salute to you, young man, and congratulations, Dad. I like to hear things like that. Thank you. So I feel like with Zay, he was always like he started out at excellence, all boys school right there. But I felt like at one point, charter school wasn't for everybody. I right. like the curriculum, but I felt like some things, some other areas wasn't what he needed to grow as a young man. So he went to a public school out in Starry City, where we at. And then, well, I knew from early, he was going to law and tech because for me, having a guy like Kenny P, who my brother, myself, my whole, my whole family played with Kenny. And he's still doing it, so... With Kenny having the opportunity at, you know, being at Lawn Tech with Coach Levy, I felt like I wasn't sending him there just for basketball. I was sending him there because he was going to be in great hands with somebody who cares about him who was going to help him mature into, a, you know, a young man. A lot of coaches, you know, today I feel care about the basketball aspect of it. And, it's you know, it's student athletes, so you got to take his books before ball. You know? Thanks. So, like, Isaiah came with a nice group. Like, his young team, like, I like the guys. I like the mix they had. Um, Ethan, what's Ethan's last name? Ethan Edwards. Ethan that was at Bedford. Salute yes. to his pops because Ethan actually is, he graduated high school a year early. So, you got kids reclassing, but he, he got skipped, graduated a year early. So, 
salute them. You got guys like Max, um, that's at Poly Prep. So these are the guys that Isaiah Spears that he played with. There's a, just a good group of kids who put, you know, the books before the ball, but can also who. Now, the, the the young man at Eagle Academy, right? No, Ethan? Bedford? Oh, Beth, I said Bedford. Uh, Bedford, Bedford. Bedford, yes, 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 yes. Uh, with Rob Phelps. He yes. definitely expect ex excellence over there, so definitely salute to Ethan. My oldest son graduated from Bedford. Um, he really didn't play, but even to be on the team, you have to have to qualify with uh, Andy Irish at Bedford. Oh, yeah, you can't even come in with a 79 or 78. He told oh. you to do it. Same thing at Bennett, I believe, but that's... Yes, yes, Will Jackson, yes. That's real, because when you think about it, when you get to college, those averages, you got to bump them up. You got to be ready for that college environment, the class, the schedule. So having the kids, I don't want to say succeed, but just having that as the norm as an 80 pushes them or prepares them to be ready for college. Definitely, definitely. Well, I'm going to say this, right? One of the great point guards in New York City history, Stu Barnett is on here. And he wanted to give you a shout out, Isaiah, and say, keep doing your thing. Because academics leads to excellence. Thank you. No doubt. All right. So, Dad, let me holler at you for a sec. I'm going to come back to you, okay? I'm going to come back to you, Isaiah. All right, move over some, Dad. You got me. Who was your toughest competition in high school? I'm going to say every game to me was a war because I'm at McClancy and I felt like we were good, but we were underrated. So when you go through Queens, you think Malloy, you think CK, Brooklyn, you got Lachlan and Nas. So I felt like the guys I came with were underrated. So every game we played with a chip on our shoulder, you know? But if you think about it, you're going with Eric and Eric Lamar and Speedy at CK with Ira Miller. Yes. Tough. You got Willie Durst, player of the year in the state at Holy Cross. Tough. Lamar Parker and uh, Malloy. Just tough. Stay you ain't got no walk in the park. No. There was no walk in the park. Every game, no. you got to come with the game. No, no, no. So every game, I felt like, was a battle. And you got Trev averaging 30 points in Brooklyn at the time. And I didn't even go uptown to the Rice and the LaSalle's and the, you know, and the St. Ray's and that. And that right. So... Every game I felt like was a was a war, but and I felt like you wouldn't pick me. I wasn't your first pick, but once you laced them up, I was coming to bust your ass, no matter Woo! who it was. Whoever, I don't care about your name. I don't care. You come to play and bust your ass, and that's my mindset. So when I'm at my son game, I still got that mindset. I got to chill out sometimes. But <laughs> that's, just, that's just how I approach the game. Right. I don't like to lose, and I feel like, you know, if I'm out there and I'm playing, you know, you got that nervous energy. Once that ball go up, we here. So. Mano, mano. Who did you pattern your game after? I feel like I had my own style. But because my brother, like, I'm going back, and that's the blueprint for me. His game was more slow. His handle was sick. He could do what he wanted to call. My game was, I'm not doing a million moves. I'm getting to, I'm getting to the cup. I'm going to pass from getting to the cup and finishing. Or I'm going to dump it off to one of these guys over here. So, but, but um, I love, I love Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumas. I love that backcourt. But just coming up in the city, oh, yeah. forget the pros. Just coming up in the city, I had so many guys ahead of me that just, so I just watch. I'm a student of the game. Like if you just take the collar alone, just that, just that our environment, our neighborhood. Yes. You got the Jones brother. You got Charles and Lamont. You got Jeezy. You got Sherrod. I was in that. Kobe, I was in that Mitchell Malik Copeland and Booger. So I'm constantly seeing a little bit of everybody. So I'm really watching what guys do, tendencies, how they play. But I really, you know, like to get after them on defense. So I like to, you know. I'm picking you up full court. Like, I really want to get after you, turn you, make you play, and earn whatever you got against you. And I, I guess that, that that's why you had so many damn steals in college. Fuck. 
It's crazy. Yeah, when, I, when, I, when I see stats like that, that just show me you're kind of like a one-on-one because you don't really see that on that level, especially how you was doing it. My team didn't impress a lot, but the college, like, the college team that I had was it was a good mix of guys. And we, we were a team that didn't – we didn't get up and down a lot, but we played defense. Like, we held teams under what they would score – no matter who it was, so you know, I pat you know, I pride I pride myself on the defensive end of the court. I don't want to see the term two way player. It's not football. Like, it's not football. I'm the point guard, you're the point guard, whoever you are, I'm guarding you. And right. I'm thinking, like we had pride back in the day, like if you get teammate might look at you like, yo boy, he killing you. Switch. Yeah. Nah, nah, yeah. I got him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta have some pride. So no matter who it was, you got to be ready to play. All right. What, what was your biggest game you said that you had in McClancy? McClancy? I would say, well, okay, my sophomore year, I didn't get a chance to play ball today. I went to the track, but Coach sent me home. He wasn't allowing sophomores on the team. So I had to play JV. I took it. I felt disrespected because I saw my peers throughout the city, sophomores, freshmen, guys, younger than me, just doing it. We wanted, right. to, win this, we wanted to win the city championship as a sophomore. Um, but that season's over, and now varsity playoffs start. So our varsity team also made the city championship. Right. Jamal Robinson, Noodles. Um, they had big eyes, and they had a crew. But... um. I, asked, I begged my coach to play, and uh, he didn't allow me to. And Mr. Reed, I know, went off for like 30-something. Right. Raymond's. So I felt like, damn, if I was in the mix, that probably, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I would have stopped him, but I felt like I would have I helped my team win. Because looking up to guys like Jamal Robinson in school, was like, you've seen him come stack the mail every day. He was a real good guy. He was a dog, though, but I just wanted to be in that mix. Um, we also, we played Lincoln at the King Classic. Mm. Mel Thomas. Yes, yes. How was that game? We got them out of here. <laughs> we got them out of here. That's how it went. The true story. I, 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 don't, I, don't mind, I don't mind hearing that every once in a while, man. Nah, but true story, um, I'm going to step. He's playing with the Rock. Picked him at half court, right? Give me that. So I'm at like the foul line. Boy, he like at half court. I look back. I go lay it up. I'm not rocking. I go lay it up. All I hear is boom. He just caught my shit. I'm like, oh. <laughs> we had yeah. The, we had the King Classic. The whole Brooklyn is there. Then after that, he come down. You know he jumping to the roof. One of the jump shots. He shot. He shoot a jumper. His speed at my number. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, time out, coach. Time out. But um, I'm just saying that was that was a good one that we remember. But every game, like I said, every game was a war. Um, the last game we played, we played LaSalle with that Ron Artest, um, Shamrod, mm. as um, Greg Springfield. They got six ten, six eleven, Ron Artest and Shamrod. So that's that's their crew. And they had a good guy named Skip out there from Queensbridge. They just had a great team. My team, my team was 5'10, 5'10, 5'10, 6'3, 6'5. So we just, like I said, we was small in size, but hard in stature. We came to the ball every game. Wow. So we come to the part of the show where I ask one of the hardest questions when people kind of run from. Mm -hmm. That is. Who ass did you bust to let you know that you was one of the top players in the city? You always ask this question. I hear it on all your interviews. <laughs> um, it was more, for me, it was more of a, um, a couple things. Like I told you, my brother was my stepping stone. So one day I got him in 309. I got Woo! him. I don't know if he let me win. He might have let, I don't know. I took it. No, I listen. I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. Knowing Sherrod and knowing Big Brother status, you got to kind of beat us because we want to know if you're good or not. Right. So I got him. 
So then from that point on, my mindset was I didn't care who I played against. They wasn't better than my big bro. So my mindset was if I could be him, I could be anybody. You know? And I, I carried that on to college, to pro, to who I played against. Um, otherwise, more so, it was more team victories, I would say. Like if we went in there and we beat a, uh, old, like a team that was ranked or, you know, I felt like, you know, it was a good thing because uh, – we got the like my junior year, Greg Harden was Queens player of the year. Um, yes, he was just a beast. So like I pride myself on just playing. He was he was good already. I, I didn't make I didn't try to make the game easier for guys. But to answer your question, I feel like it was more so team victories for me. It wasn't one person that I got and I felt like I was good. I was just you know I don't know. It, listen, it, it, I, I, I kind of explain uh, my situation, whereas <clears throat> playing against Anthony Mason on his first year, the Knicks, and it was in the West Fourth Championship, and he had thirty-four, I had twenty-eight, but my twenty-eight had the crowd going crazy, and while I was doing, now that he was in the pros, it just made me feel like you know what. I could play with these guys. Right. Knowing he was already there, right? It wasn't like I got the best of him. And it was plenty of those games, but that was the one that sticks out. And, and look, you, you just don't want to know that you're on a level. Exactly. Basketball is all confidence. Anybody can get guy on any day. Facts. So, but I feel like, like, and I tell Zay this all the time, don't compare yourself, like, that was I'm we're different. We're totally different in how our approach to the game is. But you gotta have that mindset where, you know, nobody is better than you and any day you could be anybody. And just That's right. Like I personalize things. He's the other way around. But um not to say it's a bad thing, we're just different that way. But Right, right, right. Yeah, so look. No. Everybody got their own secret toolbox when they go in their shed to figure out what tools they're going to use, right? And he's been successful so far, so, you know, this, this just, shit going to tell. I just want to push yourself to that point. Like, when you, when you feel yourself getting better, when you push yourself, you see the change in your game, you feel it. And I just want to push yourself to that level and have his motor running, just have a high motor. That's a skill you, that you can't be taught having a high motor. Facts. So I just want Obama to said, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry about that, Dad. What happened? Nah, I was going to read something that Obama said. Uh, triple double game to start your senior year 35, 10, and 10. That's my little brother. So <laughs> we, was out, <laughs> we was out in Maryland in the um, Hagerstown tournament. And that's, that's how that season started. 35, and 10, and 10. Sales. Because I, I was just about to say, yo, I was just about to ask you that. Don't tell me though that last 10 was steals. That was 10 steals. So That shit just doesn't happen. I like, people, and I'm not just saying this because you're on here. I'm a basketball head for real, mm -hmm. right? And I've seen a lot of people do it. If you average like two or three steals in the pros, you're kind of elite. Yeah. That's how and you were double that shit. That's how we started the season off. Um, and I think we, we played the math. We beat them. And we beat the team from North Carolina in the chip. And I remember, I remember coming from that tournament, high scorer, most assists, most steals. And I had like five trophies just from that one tournament alone. But like I said, that wasn't just me. Like that McClancy team, I had Mike Beck was with me. I had Shamit Cook, Omar Cook's older brother, John Riddick. It was just a blue-collar team. And we played with each other from with Katie P and Artie Cox. So, you know when you play with guys that are the genuine life for your guys, you're not just playing ball? Like, yes. to this day, we still speak. To this day, we still got a group chat. So, it was like, those are my brothers for real. So, what we did, we That's did. That's real, play, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, did you, obviously, you accomplished everything you wanted to have McClancy. I was going to leave McClancy. 
Tell, it probably had to be like that sophomore year when Coach told you you oh, couldn't play. So, yeah. So, junior year come in, I'm like, if you didn't play me, we got guys ahead of me that's really good players. People don't know um, DJ Don DeMarco. Dad yes, yes, ball. yes, my Dad God. Was nice. Dad was nice. Dad got busy. We had another guy, Tyler Day, was ahead of me. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. DJ Don DeMarco played ball? Bang, bang. He gets busy. Yeah, that was nice. Yo, let me tell you something. He hit me up a while ago. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, we got to get up and chop it up. I just thought he wanted to talk about other ball players. Nah. And I just been busy. My my schedule, like, and when he asked me, my schedule was just really busy. But I didn't know he played ball. So nah, I'm going to text him and get on him now. He didn't tell me that. Now, nah, that was nice. That was nice. So I felt like I don't got a shot. I'm not wasting my junior year. So from the rip, I was supposed to go to Brady. I'm swallowing rod. I was supposed to go to Brady or Roberson because I played with Mage. And Artie Cox left the school. He was leaving. So I'm like, right. I'll too because I'm not wasting my junior year. Mm. Um, but I had to talk with Coach Kent and I had to talk with Russell. I remember Russell, like when you had him on, Russell spoke to me. Yes, yes, he yes, my God. You're a good environment. You got good grades. You better the best you stay. And that kind of swayed me to stay. Plus, I wanted to play with my guys anyway. I just didn't want to have a I didn't want to waste a year. So. Nice. That's crazy that you said that. I remember um, <clears throat> when Tiny was a, at the Tiny freshman year, he was going to leave Lincoln mm. and go to Grady. Mm. Yeah. God knows how that ever turned out. So, my first, I got a taste. I think I was in seventh grade, and I left. I went to 308. So, this is new. This is big for me. I got, I went to the C train, to the shuttle, to the queue, and under Brighton Beach, I'm like, yo, where am I? So, I'm meeting Rod at the train station, and I got to get that Grady Lincoln tape. I got that Grady Lincoln tape. That was my first Grady Lincoln game that I've been to. So, I'm like, and at that time, I think it had... How was the experience? How was the experience? That's one of the best games I've ever been to. And I'm in seventh grade. That Lincoln, that's the Lincoln team with Juju. Um, I think that was Lincoln. Maybe the Chocolate's a freshman. And that's yep, the yep. team that's at Mo Brown. That's the... That's that the other one. That's the, that's the Fresh, the Ephraim, Hector, Sherrod, Lou. That team. So I'm wow. like... And I'm, I'm looking at the JV team. Cause that's I'm looking at the guys who just... Then playing like yo, then I see Steph on the other side shooting at the shooting during time out of the game. I'm like yo, that environment you can play basketball, but that environment is just different. I never played in the game, but I just felt the vibe and that energy from that time. So salute to all y'all guys that got great Lincoln guys because that's a different battle right there, man. Yeah, I I, I did a uh, a whole week, a whole day just of the different rival. Uh, the games that we had with them because it was a time when, you know, we was getting the best of them and then shit switched. And they was just, you know, they became the dogs. I was so, not so to all my brain guys. You and Russ with your 86. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. Because I always saw you. I know you was older than me. I used to see. I saw you in the Kahlo. And you, you used to play in Sonny Lewis. Did you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. So, I remember everybody say, pool is not. I'm like, who the hell? I didn't know. Cause I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm little, but I remember going to those games at, you know, Sonny Lewis, watching, watching guys like you, watching the older guys from my block. The, um, um, you had McMillan, you had Dwayne. Oh yeah, Dwayne, my God, yeah, yeah. Kelly. So these are the guys that, in my park in 309. So we going to the park and see the OGs play. So like I said, I'm always a student in the game, and I appreciate all y'all guys that came before me because y'all really laid it down and just made the hunger for the game real, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, brother. Listen, Pat Alfons, you know, he's kicking my ass. He was like, yo, Paul, I told you about Dem DeMarco. Pat, you did, but you never said he played ball. Nah, he played. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Don DeMarco, my bad, fam. You never told me you played ball. I saw him in Queens. I think I was doing a, a promo in one of the parks in Queens. And this guy walks past me. And he's looking at me, and I kind of get that being tall, people think you're a ball player, whatever, whatever. So he hits me up, 
and go, yo, G, that was me that won't pass you. <laughs> oh, and why didn't you say something? <laughs> so, salute my guy, Dr. DeMarco. All right. What schools recruited you? So, I played, in the summertime, I played for Riverside. That, um, and we had, we had a pretty good run with uh, Rich Parkers and uh, Tyrone Grant, Bosco, 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 the Wayne Jordan. We had a nice little run. Um, the team before us said that they, like, they won, like, they lost, like, one or two games in two years with Charles, mm -hmm. Sal, and Cav, and Kareem. So, like I said, more with blue collar team, but we got the job done. Um, I had a bunch of mail. I had a bunch of mails from a lot of Big East and um, a lot of um, AC, not, no, Big East, I'm sorry, A-10 schools. Um, but when it came down to it, the mid-majors were, 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 were who, who uh, showed the love. And just, so I took a visit out to Cal Irvine when Kevin Simmons was a chocolate out there. Um, I really wanted to go to Manhattan because they went to the tournament back-to-back -back years. But nice, yeah. Coach Rochella couldn't promise me that he would like, they were, talk, they were talking about the orphan at St. John's job. So I didn't want to go to a school where I would have to play for another coach who didn't recruit me. Um, and Boston U, I went there because I felt like they wanted me the most. And I, mm. you know, and academically it's a great school. Um, it's like right in the Ivy League school. Um, and I just had a great visit. I had a great visit. My mom and my brother were me. Um, they even offered to get Sherrod and um, Juco on my visit. Wow. Because we were playing against the team, and I guess they liked what they saw. So one of the assistant coaches tried to take Sherrod. Well, they, they took Sherrod to a Juco, Mount Ida, and he still had eligibility left. So I guess the plan was for us to link up somewhere down the road at BU. But like I said earlier, um, it was just a good mix at BU. We had a really good plan, Sanji Awo Joby. Um, just a beast. We had the 16 Joey Bay transfer from Duke was a McDonald's All American. Mm. We had Roger Bell. So that was another right, one. right, so right. Like, I could do something with this. Like as far I was away, close to home, my family could come see me play Hofstra. Um, and I felt like we had a chance to go to the tournament every year. So when I was there, we went to the tournament. We went to the college championship three out of four years. We mm. made it to the tournament once. My first year we lost to Drexel that Malik Rose. Malik Rose used to beat, man. And that team beat Memphis in the first round and lost to Syracuse. So it wasn't like wow. we were we were a mid-major conference, but we were like also others to watch. So we was just like a lot of big teams didn't want to play because they knew what could happen. Like we played Providence that year with Sham and um, Jamel and D Flight and who we lost by four or six at Providence right before Christmas. So, you know, so like, and like I said, any given day, we, anybody could be. And that was just a great mix there at BU. Wow. Let me tell you, when I was up in Maine, I went to Maine Central for my senior year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we only could watch Northeastern and Boston U, <laughs> right? This I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the straight facts. A uh, dude by the name of Dedrick Irvin was at Boston U at the time. Hmm. Kyrie's dad. I already know. And I used to watch this guy, him and Reggie Lewis at Northeastern. They used to just have the whole New England going crazy. You know, and besides the Boston Celtics, but I wasn't a real Boston fan, so I was really getting into the college basketball. But definitely remember watching BU for the whole year at Northeastern. When definitely I, uh, great programs. I would work summer camps at BU and Dre would bring his son. Dre would bring Kyrie at 9, 10, 11 years old. And he was doing the same things. I ain't going to say the same thing, but he had it back then. Um, wow. But that's one thing, like, with the summer camp, that's one thing I, like, prided myself on. Once I graduated, every summer for about four or five years, I would take a bus for the kids from the city back up to BU for summer camp just to get that environment, yeah, get that no, out the no. city for a minute, um, and just get a taste of, you know, what basketball may be like. So I did that for like four or five years until I think they stopped the camp. But um, that's something I really like. That's something I did for the kids in my community that they look forward to you summer. Man, let me take my hats off to you, brother. Not too many guys give back in such a way, you know, especially giving kids a different experience <clears throat> because one or two of those kids, maybe more, 
uh, was touched by that, and it changed their life forever. And they're going to be talking about this when they're older. We still talk. We still, like, I see guys that are a lot older, but we still talk about just that experience and opportunity, man. And I feel like us guys, if we have an opportunity to, to share with the youth and we don't do it, then we're not doing our part. Definitely. You know, Definitely. So. So this is why I, you know, I wanted to show you so much love, fam, because I know your family. You get what I'm saying? And it's not because of that. It's because of the good people that you guys are, right? Um, you guys come from a good stock, always good, since you guys were young. So whenever I got an opportunity to spread light on something positive, man, listen, anytime you guys want to come on the show, you got something you want to talk about, I'm always here. That's how we gonna do it. Thank you, Sean. Love to the fan. I just wanna say that that falls from Mom Duke's mama folks. She had us all in line. We still does to this day. She to make sure she run it down. But like um, we just like I said, we're a basketball. Do Mom do. We're a basketball family, man. Like, and we're just me and Zay right now, just doing our part for the folk family legacy, man. And pretty soon Zay go to college and hopefully go pro. If that happens, it happens. We room for him and. I feel it can happen. It depends on, you know, how he takes it and what opportunities he has. But we just, after that, we pass the baton to Rod and Sincere. You know? Yeah. That's my nephew. Um, Sincere is in seventh grade, Connecticut. He's a dog. One of the top 50 players in the country for his age. Um, outside of the rankings, man, he's just a dog. He's a throwback player. Loves to play the game. Got that genuine love for it. And Sherrod, so not only Sherrod, but his wife, Etta, was all city at Mary Bertram. Wow, definitely want to get on to it. We can make this a family affair. Trust Edith, me. Edith from Bay Bridge and Malcolm X. So we all in the same way. So like I said, it's just a good mix because, and she go harder than all of us at the game. Like you see at the game, she go harder than all of us. Like you, right. you can't sit next to her. She need her own space. But it's definitely, it's definitely a family thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, my guy Pat, he still go to the Don, Don DeMarco rant. He said he, even, he didn't even know Don DeMarco played ball. But he the one who put, plugged me with Don DeMarco, right? He said he's a humble kid. That's why he'll never tell you he played ball. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, Coach Preblo, I think this is him, said LaVar is also at all of um, Isaiah's games. Never had a more supportive father. Mm. So, awesome. you know what's crazy? I, um, I do social work for a living, right? And yes. um, I had a job that it was a better opportunity for more money. And I did it for about a year. But for me, my other job gave me more freedom and flexibility to make it to my son's games. I, uh, my wife and I, we also have twins. We got nine year old boys. So for me, it was more, it was more important to be in my kids' life when I um, be there and be supportive in their lives, then making more money. Because you can make the money and not have the support, and it doesn't equal out. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because I'm like, some of my coworkers said I got fired from a job. I'm like, I didn't get fired. I left. I resigned because I feel like my, my, my role right now is to support my kids and my child. So my presence, and if I'm there, I'm not just there to support my son. Like, I look at all the kids on the team. And all the, like, you got like three, you got three guys from Brebo on that team. The three scenes are from Brie Boy. You got Cook's son, Jakai. Yes, Jakai. Yes, yes. Made all the movement from North State. Yes. Jordan Newsom. Yeah. All three, all mm. three guys from the Brie Boy, they, they all went to the daycare and Brie Boy together, man. Wow. So, it's not, I'm not there to support Isaiah. Like, I support the kids, man. And Kenny and Coach and, and Levy are just great guys. Like, the team stays together year round. It's a good group of guys. You look at what they put out from a small school. Everybody knows Long Tech was an old um, movie there. Don't look like a school. But you got yeah. Larry, Larry Moreno. You got um, Matt. What's my last name? Sorry. Matt Scott. You got Nico. You got like three or four D1 kids and a whole host of D2 kids coming out of Long Tech. But every kid mm. from that program is going on to college. So the coaches there, they're checking the schedule. They're checking the report cards. I was talking to Kenny today. When report cards come out, there's no practice. We're going over your report cards, what you need. We want to make sure you qualify. Like, a lot of coaches, I don't know if they go over the, the qualifications because the rules change or what they need to qualify, what classes they need. 
how many classes, how many social sciences you need, how many maths you need. You know what I'm saying? And making sure your kids are taking the right classes because if you're coaching, you're not just coaching that kid for basketball purposes. You're there to be in his life to make sure they succeed. So what I see a lot of is a lot of kids reclassing. If that's their choice, you do what you do. I'm not, I'm, look, I'm not, look, do what you do. But what about those kids who reclass and don't make it? What happens to yep. them then? It's a lot of them. Listen, I watch YouTube every day. I'm watching basketball more than anything. And it's sad to say, one of my favorite things to watch is all those super hype kids, like all the when you're, where are you now segments, mm -hmm. all that, that episode, uh, that YouTube uh, channel, Stunning Growth, mm -hmm. right? And not saying I'm, I'm, I'm happy that these guys didn't succeed, but people give the, a lot of kids too much hype. Right. And I was talking to my cousin earlier today. I have a younger cousin, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I posted him today that a lot of high schools are coming after us in eighth grade. And I was telling his dad, I was like, listen, I, you're going to make the, the last decision, but consult with me so we can kind of make a group decision. You'll make the last decision, but at least you're not just saying, I'm just going to go to my man's and I'm in this dude from down the block. You actually have family members that have been down that path, know these people, and kind of know the road. So okay. with you being there and you giving up your job, but your greatest, your greatest investment are your children. Yeah. So you do nothing wrong, Pop. Salute to you again, brother. And it's crazy. Like, like I just want to restate, like, if kids read, it works out for some kids, it does. It does. So I'm not, I'm not here to point fingers at kids who do it or say what you're doing is wrong. That's just they on the side. They feel that's what's best for you, then you do it. But I feel like there needs to be more things set up in place. So when I was kids, if I'm with your son for four years, I want to make sure he's successful on the court and off the court. It's a package deal. They go together, man. And that's how you succeed. So... That's what I feel like. That's what I knew I was going to get at Lawn Tech. So that's why Isaiah with Kenny. Like, that's, it was a, a no-brainer for me. So that's where I knew he was going to go, man. Well, listen. My guy, Arthur Lee Walker, mm -hmm. played with your coach, Orlando Vandross, at American International. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. He said that you were the best God, he ever coached. Wow. That's big, though. Man, was at UVA right now. They won a national championship two years ago. So, like I said, man, like, I think Art is repping now. Like, I, Art was on that great, that great Grady team as well. It's yes. funny because Art repped Isaiah's first playoff game this year at the post. So. Listen, he was telling me, Art keeps me in the loop. Art keeps me in the loop. He's telling me about uh, Isaiah. Tell me about sincere early on. So that that's good that you know everybody's still connected and we can you know help out the next generation. Definitely, that's what it's all about. All right, let me let me move to Isaiah real quick. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. Can we move the phone up a little bit? There you go. There you go. There you go. Cool. So, how's your time been at Lawn Tech? My time at Lawn Tech has been great, to be honest with you. I've been in, I played, when I got to the school, I played varsity for four years. I watched mm. a lot of great players come up ahead of me. I had to wait my turn, though. But I had players like Larry Moreno, David Grady, Victor, um, Devontae Cook. A lot of good players I had. And then so I had to wait my turn, and then now it's my time. Yeah, man. Listen, like I said, I, I, I made a post early on about Khalil Brantley, Malachi Smith, and Juan Carlos. Guys who I've been following since they were freshmen and sophomores in high school. Actually, Khalil, when he was a freshman playing with Tiny at Nazareth, and Malachi, who plays with my guy, uh, Chris Smith at St. Ray's, and, you know, Bud with Juan Carlos. Seeing these guys and watching them a lot and hearing them develop. So when I, I kept hearing your name pop up, like people talking to conversations, 
And when when another name get added to a group of guys who everybody else is saying official, you gotta take note. Do you feel the same way? Do I feel the same way as what? Being in that same group classes, uh, the group of guys who I mentioned. Definitely, I definitely do. I feel like I work hard enough, and I feel like it shows. Like it's starting to show more, more, and more. Out of those three, who have you played against? I played against. Um, I played against Jay Kwan. I never played against Khalil, and. I, I scrimmaged against Malachi. We had a scrimmage against him, like my so. I mean, my junior year. But yeah, that's, that's what. I mean. Okay. Okay. All right. So, tell me a little bit some about uh, <clears throat> Lord Tech and how it fits your style of play. Um. Honestly, that, that school fits me great, and I'm gonna tell you how. It's like when I got there, like I couldn't really like, shoot jump shots or handle the ball well. Like in eighth grade, I was a big man. But, like, when I got there, Kenny B and Coach Levy, they took me out of the wing. And, like, they made me, like, they made me um, develop. I developed as a player. And my jump shot got better. I worked on it consist consistently every day. And it's, like, now, now, like, I can do, like, anything I want because they trust me enough to do it. Yeah, Coach just said you're a Swiss Army knife. Let me tell you, there's, there's nothing like having – multiple sets of skills and being able to do multiple things because that's going to get you to the next level. See, most guys, when they go to these programs, everybody just looks to think about buckets, right? And if you think about what your dad did on a college level as far as getting buckets and also the steals, right? Doing something outside of the box that's going to make you stick out even more. What are some of the things you think you have to improve on? To get your game to the next level, I could definitely improve on like, improve on my defense some more, and just like my handling. Like I can I can handle the ball, but I'm trying to get it like a little tighter and stuff. So like nobody takes the ball from me now, but I need to get it tighter. Definitely. Okay, okay. How how's that jump shot, Dad? How's that jump shot? Yo, if yo, I can tell you this no lie. A lot of times it, it's looking real good now. We just gotta get that God in. He, cause Rod, Rod's like the Joe Jackson of our family. So he forget all these trainers, trainers, train for the wrong things. He been training us for since forever. So we gotta get that God <laughs> in straight. Cause right now we look it's low. And Rod posted a video, and Trevor was the first. Trevor did the first one to say, "Nephew, you gotta get that hand in and let the ball guy." You know what I'm saying? So once we fix this little, it's mechanics, but the love and the passion is there. So. He's doing things without having to be told to do it because he wants to get better. Yes. So that's the growth. That's the growth I've seen in this game. And him going to Connecticut this summer was big because, like I said, Sh you Sherelle, you might do two or three a day. Mm. They're going hard. It's not on, you know, like coming up, we had guys who had a genuine love and taught us. Your coach was your coach, your trainer. Father figure in some ways, everything. Now, you got guys who do it for profit or do it for whatever reason. Not everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody, but there's a lot of them. When, when, I, when, I, when I hear a kid say says he has a trainer, I I, I, I go, okay, because I hear that all the time. You know, I and my trainer, I right, cool. cool. It's all good. It's all good. So, Isaiah, who do you pattern your game after? Um, I don't really have a set person I pattern my game after. I feel like I'm my own player. Like, I go down my own road, and I'm just going to do what I feel comfortable doing. So, that's the answer for that. Okay, okay, okay. Have, <clears throat> have any uh, schools been taking any notice of you? Um, I don't have any concrete schools right now, but hopefully in the future I'll get some. And... But I'm definitely working, so hopefully it'll come around. Definitely. Definitely. That's good. That's good. All right. Now, this year is going to be a major, major turning point in your basketball career. Yeah. Don't go into it putting too much pressure on yourself. 
the great thing about it is that we know how good you are. Other people may not. But remember, a lot of people didn't know who the hell John Morant was. A lot of people didn't know who Damon Lillard was. And they changed everybody's mind. So you keep working. Keep listening to Dad, what you, you know, what you've been doing, right? I can't say, can't give you too much things to do because you're already doing the right thing and you got great people behind you. So I just want to say success and salute, young brother. Thank you. Thank you. Your day's going to come soon. And trust me, I'm going to be at those games. <laughs> right? This, this, this show started out as a high school show. But I wanted to go back and get some of the people who laid the foundation. Like right now, we have one of the greatest players in New York City history listening, and that's Kenny Hutchinson. Kenny mm. Hutchinson played for Ben Franklin. Mm. Right? One of the greatest guards who did it in, in all the five-star camps against all the All-Americans and did it in high school. So I'm going to see you soon, my man, K. Hutch. All right, Isaiah, let me speak to Dad again. Dad. Yes, sir. Now, we all, you know, play college ball, and we go on the road, mm -hmm. right? This is my James Major question. Mm -hmm. How much money did you guys get on the road for, like, meal money? You see my face? <laughs> Yo, hold on, hold on. Come, we're gonna come back for the last segment. I have to go come uh, back. Uh, 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 <laughs> that was classic. Uh, that was classic, yo. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's wait for this time to go down. That's crazy. So, the face? Yeah, man. Mm -mm. New York City. And what he did was he sacrificed his job and livelihood. He's still okay, but sometimes some people look at the money as the end all be all. And he said, you know what? I'm going to take this other job that's going to have me be a little bit more flexible so I could be at my child's game. And like Coach said, he's at every game. So, salute to you again, Dad. Well, Paul, I just want to say something like, I just want to give a, um, a shout out to like, like we're from the same hood. Like, I want to give a shout out to, to Mr. Digg just for being a father to the yes. whole community. Like, yes. running the Midget League for all Legend. these years. And just for being there for all of us, man. Like, the Midget League saved a lot of lives, man. And it was just, like, good guys in my corner, like Mackie. I love Mackie to death. Um, yes. A lot. Derek Pierce. So, like, these are guys yes. that, like, I tell Mackie anything, baby shower, wedding, whatever, birthday party, he's there. Like, it That's was right. Just, just good, good people, man. So, like, I just feel like I just had, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to have good people around me. And, you know, I'm just doing my part as an adult now to pass it on to the young guys, man. That's right. Listen, uh, uh, Mr. Diggs uh, was like one of the only gentlemen from the neighborhood who would come to the games when I played that Lincoln. You heard me and, say, you said gentlemen. And that's, that's. Yes. We no, we he, was. He, he, he was a, he was a, a, a mentor to me, uh, always gave me good advice, and he let me know, listen, man, if you just stay on the right path, things are going to work out for you. And when I would see him at the game, you know, he bring Trevor to the game, and <clears throat> Trevor reminded me, you know, as we grow, he's like, yo, gee, it's crazy, man. My dad used to bring me to the games, and I had to see him in the stands, and it made me feel good because the community came to support. So shout salute to, to Mr. Diggs and the Diggs family. Shout out to Trevor Diggs, man. My, my bro over there doing it in China now, called him International Trev. He did his thing in Vegas. He took him, won a couple state championships. Now he's in China coaching, man. That's so, right. Shout out. So and Trey. And Trey. Because Trey was there. Trey was at those games, and Trey the one that gave me that message. My bad. It wasn't Trevor. It was Trey. Facts. Trey. Trey, Ms. Dig, Mrs. Dig, but Trev, me and Trev was a year apart. So we went through a lot of wars together, together, and against each other, but that's like my brother for life. So I just want to give a shout out to my guy, man, because I'm just, I'm proud of you. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. 
Facts. Facts. So, how is transitioning from college star to the real world? So, I played overseas for two years, but I didn't play in a big country. So, I got an experience of what it was. Um, I, I felt like when I, I still, I think about it to this day, like I, I know I could have played somewhere else in, but you know what? I look at it like it wasn't for me, you know, if it didn't happen that way. So now I'm leaving Boston and coming back to the, back at mom's crib. I'm in the living room now. Like, like you gotta, you gotta get a job, young man. So like, like it's crazy. I'm taking like odd jobs. I was doing retail, it's crazy. And uh, I got a call. Um, I'm a social worker, like I said, I got a call. Um, my degree is in sociology and criminal justice. I got a call, and I've been I've been in the field for the last Isaiah 17, the last 16 years. Wow. Um, doing that, so and I'm back in school now to, to get my master's right now. So me and Zay will graduate together this year. So salute, salute. You That's talking, right. You was talking to Jamal on the show, and I'm listening. Like I said, I'm always listening to student of the game, and he was talking about how. He, he's a mentor to his players, you know? Yes. So I'm getting my master's in social work, but I'm going to become a licensed clinical, clinical social worker, and I want to be a sports therapist. And I want to just talk about, because there is a transition from college to pro, back to real life, the pressure that these kids have from coaches and family and expectations that they have upon themselves. And who do you talk to? A lot of times they hold that stuff in, and it might come out the wrong way, or a kid, you know what I'm saying? So... I feel like being able to talk to somebody who has the experience, who's been through those things, um, that's the lane I want to go into. So I'll be doing that. I'll be doing that pretty soon. That's the next thing. That's the next thing for me. Wow. Listen, <clears throat> I want to give big shout-outs to Jamal Robinson, Ephraim Whitehead, and Laura Milley because they came on here and kept it real and talked about the emotional part <clears throat> that – people who play sports go through. And there's a lot of guys right now as we speak, LaVar, that we know, not going to blow them up, mm -hmm. that are going through a lot of emotional trauma right now, mm -hmm. who, are the, who, are, who are afraid to come on the show because they feel like they didn't accomplish what, they, what everybody else thought they should accomplish. And they're still suffering through that right now as a grown man. Yo, can and if you can, and if, you know, what you're doing, if you know, you'll be the perfect person for them to talk to. I want to speak on that for a second, Pooh, because a lot of my peers um, were successful. NBA, pro, uh, overseas, very su successful, lucrative careers. And you have to commend them for that. You have to be happy for – if you can't be happy for other people, you can't be happy for yourself. So – Right. So it worked out for you. We all tried it. It worked for you. Great. I'm happy for you. I support you, brother, because you're one of my guys and you did it but it doesn't work that way for everybody. And because it doesn't work out how you planned or envisioned it, it's not the end or be all who you are. Yeah. We're not only basketball players. You know Thank you. Mean? Say that again. Say that again, we're, please. We're not, we're not just basketball players, man. So, you know, there's more, there's more to life than when the ball stops. So that's why I definitely want to go in that lane and just have these real conversations and have the clinical um you know, um, degree behind it because it's definitely needed. Talking to high school kids, talking to kids who might be peer pressure and using drugs because they're not doing things or sports performance drugs. You just, you know what I'm saying? Just to keep up with the competition. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. So, you know, so to all those who was listening, if, if there's, if never measure yourself to another man's success, man, we all walk, nobody walks in your shoes. Nobody has your story. So you lead your life how you lead it, man. And, and hold your head high. And that's, that's, how, that's how I look at life, man. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I wanted to create this platform to give our guys a chance to tell their stories. I, I'm not the dude who's going to bring up somebody's scandals. I don't know about that. I don't know about the, the negative. I don't know the fact that you didn't make it. I want to talk about all the success. All the right. good things that happened, that's what we're going to highlight. <clears throat> right. You've got to be happy for other people's success, man. If not, you cannot be happy for yourself. Like I told you, when I left my job, like some of my friends said, yo, I got fired. Like, I didn't get fired, I, I, I quit. Because this works for me. 
this is what I'm choosing to do. This is the, the walk that I'm choosing to walk. You know what I'm saying? So, like, and you could choose to see those people and, and talk about it. Or you could just, you know what they say, well, got to leave stuff alone, man. Because what I learned is being at peace is more, more important than being right sometimes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, but I just want to get back to your question you asked me. You asked me about that, that, meal, that meal money. Yes. Let's get to the meal money. <clears throat> Riverside was better than BU. I'm going to put it like that. <laughs> Like BU was a BU was a hockey school, right? So right, yes, I, I know that. Players come in the study hall and say, "I'm foregoing my last two years and I'm putting my name in the NHL draft." Like, I've like the four years I was there, they won two national championships and had like ten first rounders. Mm. So that's a hockey school. So whatever they was getting was going that way. That's crazy. That was going that way. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say that it didn't. I'm not trying to say that that came, but it wasn't like. Yeah, it wasn't like that. Not that. Not there. All right. All right. Just tell me it wasn't five dollars a day. Nah. You know, yo. Sometimes, sometimes they gave like they what they got the meals like it was. It wasn't a lot of cash on hand, man. It was. It was different, man. It was different. It was different. Well, it, it's crazy because. You know, the more I, I hear these stories and the more I hear these stories, and I just revert back to the story that my coach told me how the business of college basketball works. Mm -hmm. I'm just amazed that a lot of people didn't know. Or, or and then look, if you had a school and you're not getting no money, you don't know because you ain't getting no money, right? right? And somebody not telling you this. But as we were coming on my, I remember my recruiting visit, that's something that the guys would say, like, yo, the road trips, yo, we get hit off. I was like, hit off, what do you mean? They give us money. Even now, the guys who, you know how you, uh, you get a recruit coming in, mm -hmm. and everybody want to rush to take that recruit out? Yeah. Right, you want to be the host, right? Why Why do we want to be the host? Because you got that brand. You got that <laughs> brand. Yo, my last couple trips, I got it down pat, like, I tell the host, listen, man, I know what you got. You give me half, you keep half, we do it like that, man. And that's how that's how it goes. But like my business account, Irvine, if I was chasing, if I was chasing the bag, that's you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. But um, but I didn't want to go okay. six, I didn't want to go six hours away on a flight to go to school. Right. I'd have been with Kevin Simmons to Chaka, but it, it was definitely, you know what I'm saying? It was some schools was definitely always on the table, but I chose, you know, my family and where I wanted to be, so that's why I chose school close to, close to home. You're, you're one of the fortunate guys who picked a school that was right for them. Right. And I kind of explain to guys all the time. A lot of players like to go where the hype is. They like to go where everybody think they should go. And a lot of times, they're not a good fit for that program. Mm -hmm. You know, what Isaiah said that Brooklyn Law Tech fits him perfectly. If you're a ball player, you want to be in a program that fits you, that fits your game. A lot of times you might go to a school, like for me, even, even at BU, I played four years, but I want to say it wasn't my first style of basketball that I would have chose to play because I had to pass, cut through, Spot up shoot. These are things you learn. I yes. like to try on the fourth option. So I like, to pride, I like to pride myself on being a thousand point fourth option, man. That's how I look mm. at it. Because mm. you going, that's why I had to get it myself. That's why I was that's why I had to get it myself. Because I knew the players were going for Roger Bell and, and Touchy I was Joe. Those are go to guys. Yes. But our offense wasn't predicated where I had the ball and it was one four and it was ice. We, we didn't do that. So I tell kids today, pick a school that wants you, that fits your style of play, and where you could grow. Because you might go to a school because of the name and you're not playing. Or you're going to play one year. Why not go somewhere you could play four years and be the man? Who don't want to be the man? Like, you gotta go to what fits you. Don't don't fall into the pressure of I go to this, I go to this school, I go to that school. It works it works for some because that's where they can blossom, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's not for everybody. Nope. So. It, 
Well, there's true. a lot of lessons for guys who made it to the league that went to great mid-major schools and made that school their home. Salute to my guy Speedy Claxton, man. Oh, for sure, for that's sure. Jay, that's Jay Wright. I'm, I, well, Jay Wright was at Villanova with Rolly Massimino, but as a head coach, that's his first pro. And I've seen Speedy develop from Christ the King to, to Hofstra to every year constantly getting better, to winning, to winning NBA championships. Most yeah. Rose as well. They won championship with the Spurs. So there's a lot of mid-major guys who can do it. But Speedy had the ball in his hands from the jump all four years. So it was the right situation. He had St. John's. He had other schools. But that was the right school for him where he could prosper. So that's my advice. You got to go where the style fits you and where you can grow as a player, man. I know you've been hearing these lessons all the time, Zay. Yeah, I do. That uh, take heed, brother, because he ain't talking nothing but facts. I know. That's good. So, Dan, what is your perception of the state of New York City basketball? So, I was out of the loop for a minute because, and I got back in with Zay. Um, I think about this question a lot. I talk about it with Sherrod a lot. Coming up, I feel like AAU teams pick you. Like, you were picked, you were selected to go to Riverside to the Gauchos, to the Broncos, USA, or um, what's Long Island team? Long Lightning? Yes. Before the, the Panthers, sorry, I'm showing my age. The Panthers, the Panthers yes, 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 yes. They chose you, you know what I'm saying? And teams were built that way. And I felt like for those guys who didn't go on those trips, who might have stayed on this citywide, um, Elm Corps, whatever, you worked on your craft until you got to that level. But now... My son's not playing, so now we got Poo and Vars All-Stars, and we're traveling now, and we got an AAU team. It benefits the kids, I guess, to be on the circuit, but at the same time, it's kind of like watered down, man. Because everybody's doing it. Every so I tell, yo, I tell kids, you don't need to go. Everywhere. Right. Everybody be the surprise. Team. Be the surprise. Be the one that the, 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 count, the, the college and the pro scouts go. Who the f is that? Because I'm going to tell you, at my school at Family Dickinson, they used to hold an All-American camp. ABCD was there too. ABCD? Yeah. 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 I'm talking about. So, everyone was and was hyped off of Lenny Cook. And it's not to not lock kick Lenny Cook because he's a Brooklyn guy. Mm -hmm. Right? But there was little fanfare about this kid from Cleveland. Mm hmm because Lenny had all the hype. Look, heavy is the man who wear the crown, or the exactly. woman who wear the crown. Exactly. Okay. Because in a, in a week, life changed. Yep. In one week, life changed. Exactly. I'm so I always tell a kid if you if you look at a lot of guys who are the NBA, these guys who are the superstars, you got some that come from big programs. Then you got like a another half that come from mid-major programs. Yeah. And be successful. You just really need to get a foot in the door, man. You just need an opportunity. Like, look, you just need an opportunity, man. Yeah. All right. Dad, turn, turn our camera to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Three guys, three best guys you played against. High school, college, and a pro. High school, I'm going Steph Marbury. Like, people, I, don't, I don't feel Steph has spoke about enough. Because we all know, we might have had a good game against Steph. We might have beat Steph. But we was like, he was different, man. Yes. I don't, I don't feel he's appreciated enough in the city because that guy from – Early, I know there was a lot of pressure on him, but he was different, man. So, high school, I'm going to say Steph Marbury. Um, college level, college level. Um, for me personally, um, I felt like any big guard was was easy for me to guard because I was quicker. So my my issues came with guys my size, like a Shaheem Holloway or John Tower, because. We do the same thing. Oh, okay. it, 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 explain to me. Mm -hmm. So explain to me, like you had, you had, like you said, you have difficult with guys your size. 
But you ain't have a problem with the bigger guy. Nah. I, on paper, I'm 5'11", but so you know what that means. Everybody got two inches, right? Yeah. So any guy bigger than me, I felt like I was quicker then. And it, even if they beat me, I could, I could recover in time to get back. And I felt yeah. like I was strong enough that we, nobody was going to just post me up. Like, we made it to the tournament. I was guarding Shea Seal. Shea Seal is 6'5". Because he was killing. I got you now. now. I don't know what I can do, but I'm trying. <laughs> so, but guys like a, a Shaheen Holloway or, or, or Mookie or John, John Thomas, where you're just as quick, and get, those guys, for me, were harder to cover. But mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it local. I'm going to say, like I said, I, I love my man Speedy Black because I saw his growth. We played in the same conference for three, well, three years. And I'm just proud of his growth. Like, I saw it. Like, I feel like he was a hard cover because he had ball screens, triple screens, back screens. He go mm. back to you. We rocking that on you. And I feel like um, – and I played against everybody, man. And I you, you like, already named two pros already, so. I know. I know. So, pro, I mean – Yeah, so, I mean I, – I don't, I don't know. That's that – that's 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 it. You you need to go to both high school. They cover both high school, college, and pro. Yeah, those guys. Those guys were tough covers, man. Cool, cool, cool. Let me see. Did I, uh, Isaiah? You feel any pressure to live up to the legendary career of your dad? I don't feel any pressure to it. I used to though. Tell me, tell me about it. Like, everywhere I go, like, every park I go, like, I have a game. I hear about my dad, how he's played, how he's a legend, he's park, or how he's so good. Like, it's a, like, it didn't bother me, but I, I hear it everywhere. And then, like, I put a little pressure on my back, but, like, as I got older and stuff, it, it went away. And I just, like, try to live up to it or live to be better. Man, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you how fortunate you are, young man. A lot of us don't get a chance or didn't have a chance to have our fathers at the game. A lot of us didn't have a chance <clears throat> to hear our fathers tell us how great we were. You know what I'm saying? I coach high school basketball. And I think <clears throat> we have one kid who have a dad at home. So a lot of time, we're the dads. Exactly. So I just want to know how, how fortunate you are, you know, and and – that should just make you work even harder when somebody tells you how great your dad was. It's not pressure. It's not pressure because you was built for that. Remember, you're a folk. You know what I'm saying? So you keep you keep building on those building blocks that your parents is laying down for you and your family, you know, and keep doing what you're doing. But just know that that man to the right of you, he going to hold you down for the rest of your life, man. All right, we got you, young cat. All right. I, I, Definitely I, cool. I, I appreciate it, Pooh, but it's like, like I said, man, it's like my family is just, I love my family, like Sherrod and Chad, my younger brother, Mo. He's like, he can connect more so. Like, what I love about it is as your kids grow older, you learn to parent your kids differently. So you learn how yeah. to parent as well. But my younger brother, Mo, he has that connection where he can talk to my oldest two sons, and they might tell, you know, relate to him when it can relate to me, but he'll be that go-between. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a good setup, man. Like, I feel like in, in life, our job as parents is to make sure our kids have a better life than we had, whether that's financially or educationally. Whether the blueprint has to be set. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what – that's that's my that's my goal in life. Um, my wife and I, we have twin boys. They're, they're nine. So – after Sincere, my, I have a niece, Nia, she might pick it up. I got another cousin, Mariah, who plays. And hopefully the twins pick it up. So, like I said, we coming, man. We ain't like, I want that name. When you talk about New York City, I want, not just Brooklyn, I want that name to be here forever, man. So, I want that that folk legacy to be be around. So Like, like, that, like that Marbury, like that Marbury legacy, right? With the long, long line ball trust, play. We gonna, trust, I promise you, we getting one, man. I promise you that. I promise you that, man. I and look, I, I, I'm going to be around for a minute, bro, because we're going we gonna to celebrate that first NBA player. We all going to be in the house. Yes. For definitely sure. Are. We definitely are. Definitely. 
Well, listen, this part of the show where we ask you, who would you like to nominate to be on the show? Because if you don't basketball heads, somebody that was on the show got to kind of nominate you. Or you just got to be part of the family. So, I would love, I'm going to keep it standing, like I said. Um, if I nominate anybody, going to be sure. You can do Sherrod and Singh. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother yes. situation right there. Yes. Um, Me and Sherrod already talked. He want to do it in 309. So, already, oh, we already, already know. Up. I already know. Sherrod and Singh. And you got to gotta keep it for the home team. Got to get, gotta, gotta get Trevor Davis here, man. Uh, well, I already spoke to Trev. Trev, the Chinese says, soon as he able to make that connect, we going to make it happen. My job is my job is easy. And those, that, that's, that's right. That's right. Trev, Trev, my young boy, man. I'm definitely going to look out for me, man. Trev. Just wait for him to touch back down. Definitely. Well, listen, man. I, I appreciate catching up with you, man. And, 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 and finally get to talk with you. Cool. I just want to say thank you for, like, I did interviews before. Um... And they were great, but for allowing me to have a platform for my son and I to um to share, it meant a lot. Like we appreciate it, um, and I just want to say thank you. Um, appreciate what you do, and just thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this together. Because this is something that we can look at for the rest of well, hopefully it's like the first of many, man. So yes, thank you. I got the first one. I got the first one. Yes, thank you. yes, no doubt. Salute to you. Both kings, appreciate you, man. And look, look, hit me up anytime you need anything, LeVar, anything. Isaiah, anytime, anything. Don't worry about it, Yo, anytime. We want, we want our picture, too. I ain't see you on one. Oh, look to it. My man, all right, let me yeah. just say this. My guy, he couldn't make it tonight. Trust me, I'm going to show you your picture tomorrow. Man. It will be here tomorrow. He, he already did it, but he, oh. he, he traveled on the road, but he oh. did it this morning. All right. Oh, no, nah, for sure. It's, it's, a, it's a family thing. I got you. But thank you, cool. Thank, like I just said, thank you, man. We really we really appreciate it. And no you, doubt. everybody know, but I just want to say I love you, son. You're going to do big things in the future, man. That's, that's real right there, man. Yo, trust me, man. I, I, I was supposed to do Khalil and his dad. Uh, I'm going to get... Uh, who else? I need to get... Um, Kim Hampton and her daughter will be on <laughs> as well. And Ty Law. I'm going to get Ty Law. I, I'm going to get all my young guys early. You know what I'm saying? See all these guys come up. Thank Definitely want to start them early. All three of those guys are great players. All, all three are great players, man. Yes. All right. Again, salute, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped into the, the world, world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes.